Good morning, Antioch Church Embrace. Thank you for doing your devotions with me this morning. We are in Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 9. Let's pray together. Lord, help us to seek you today. Lord God, not only for these moments that we spend together, but Lord God, throughout this day, help us to seek you. Help us to find you. Help us to experience your hand of grace and leading upon our hearts and our lives, Lord. We pray that you would give us, Lord God, an awareness of your presence, an awareness of the way that you're leading us, an awareness of the opportunities that you give us so that truly, oh Lord God, we would see you everywhere, and be led by you so that we might be following you throughout this day. Help us to keep our hearts and our minds on the cross that we, O oh Lord God, would seek to know the cross in a more intimate way and to love the cross because, Lord God, there we find life. There we find the laying down of our own sin and taking up the righteousness of Christ. So help us, O oh Lord God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, we're in Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 9, and it says, At that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to them and placed the child among them. And he said, I Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of, his, of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their necks and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. If your hand or foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the, hell, the fire of hell. Amen. As so I uh, read this passage and think about what Jesus is saying through it, um, first of all, we see Jesus telling us once again, you know, in the that the least of these, whatever you do for the least of these, is what you've been done for me. And truly, in uh, the society of Jesus's time, children really was the least of these among them at, at that time as well. And so. Uh, we see how Jesus is telling his disciples, um, you know, humble yourself, humble yourself and, um, you know, be lowly in that way. But we also see other, something else that Jesus is talking about um, when he refers to being like children. Um, you know, we are called to be innocent, um, as innocent as doves, but also as cunning as snakes. And so... We realize that Jesus is calling us to um, do our best to be sinless. And we think about the way children are and how full of faith they could be. Um, you know, we might say that they're gullible nowadays, right? Because we think that we're so much smarter. Uh, we know how to discern right and wrong. But, um, you know, with children, they believe, you know, and they hear whatever, you know, we have to say to them. And they don't suspect or think that we, we are lying to them. Um, children are full of faith. They are um, you know, people who believe what they are told. And, you know, of course, Jesus is not telling us to believe everyone and to be naive. But he is, I believe, telling us that when we read the word, we should have faith when we read. When we pray, we should have faith when we pray. Um, the other thing that he talks about throughout this passage is what it means for a person to be sinless, right? And, you know, we talked a bit about whether or not, you know, Jesus really allows us by grace, uh, by the freedom, you know, 
does that allow us to be able to do whatever we want? You know, I used that big word before, antinomianism, right? Again, being against the law. Um, here we find Jesus clearly, you know, expressing that he does not take sin lightly. And he does not expect or allow his followers to take sin lightly. Um, he even goes so far as to say, you know, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you, causes you to sin, gouge it out. And obviously he's not talking literally, but he is talking about the importance for each one of us to have that eternal perspective over this worldly one. Right? That we would keep our, our hearts in mind, um, in our minds, we would have eternity and, and true life in our thoughts. So that we would reject the things of this world and really be able to focus on what is true life. Um, I think the other way to re read that passage is for us to think about Paul's words when he, calls, when he says that the church is like the body of Christ. Right? And he talks about each member of the body being each one of us. And when he tells us, look, if one part of the body causes you to sin, you need to be able to discern that. We need to be able to discern that and protect the rest of the body. Right? Protect the rest of the body. And so if that means, and um, Paul says it also, right? It, if that happens, it's better for us to disown that person or excommunicate that person, hand them over to the devil, even says, so that that person may find life, right? It's not like out of hatred, but it's actually allowing that person to go through the difficulty of this world so that at one point or another, they would come back in repentance. Um, in that way, in so doing, you are protecting the body, but also loving that member to salvation. Of course, it, it means hardship for that person for the moment, but in the end, it means salvation, and that's what we're called to do. Um, I know it doesn't seem like the loving way at the moment, but in the big picture, which is what Christ is calling us to, that we ought to be willing to you know, cut it off or gouge it out, whatever it requires in order to protect the body, but also to love and help the other person. Let's pray together. Help us, Lord, to think on these words, to carefully consider what it means for us, O oh Lord God, even in our own lives. Lord, is there sin that we have taken lightly? Help us, O oh Lord God, that we would be convicted of our sin, to bring it before you in repentance, to turn away from sin, no longer allowing it to have mastery over us, but Lord God, turning our hearts towards you, acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord over us, that we would surrender and submit our whole lives to you, God. Lord, if there is sin in us, help us that we would not take it lightly. O oh Lord God, if there is sin in our congregation, help us, O oh Lord God, not to take it lightly. But Lord God, with discernment, be able to recognize sin, to call out sin, and to, if, even necess if necessary, God, to even be willing to gouge it out. So help us, O oh Lord God, to know how to respond to the sinful attitudes of this world so that we might be walking in your faithfulness, walking in your righteousness, God. Thank you so much, O Lord God, that you love us despite the ways that we fail. You do love us. You continue to love us still. We thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. And I pray that you have a great day today.